Y'all listening to that 20 by 20 podcast, the best of wrestling, the best of hip hop. Check it out. Boom. Ow! This is the 20 by 20 podcast. Shout out to the nation of domination. Yeah. High in these potted streets, but we doing our thing. Tell Coco beware, bringing them birds to the ring. Attitude era, WWF on the leather. It's that 2020 podcast. I go wherever your shorty with a frog splash. She look like Sunny, but she Puerto Rican. I came through like the repo man creeping. Welcome, welcome everybody to the 20 by 20 podcast. And we are your host, Nathan McFly with LP Dangerously. Dangerously. Well, all right, all right. Okay. Dangerously. I know I lagged on that first one. Nah, nah. <laughs> hey, listen. It's a, it's a new, it's a new wave. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. We're just I'm trying things out. I'm, I'm consistently trying things out. Sounds good, brother. Sounds good, man. What's Yo, did going you, on? Ever see, you ever seen that video of uh Paulie Dangerously versus Medusa and WCW? Oh no. Mm. I don't think I have. I'm gonna send that to you. I did not know Paul. Fucking Paul Heyman had a match in WCW, but he did. I didn't. I didn't know that either. I know he was managing a couple people. You know, he had like the Dangerous Alliance and all that shit. Yeah, and this. Uh, I think it was a Clash of Champions or some shit like that. Fucking, he had Michael P.S. Hayes as his fucking manager walking down. But it was like a, you know, Paulie Dangerously at the time was a manager also. So it was such a funny ass thing. Like he's all fucking covered up with the fucking headgear and shit like that. Comedy go. Comedy go. That's funny. Paulie. Fucking Paulie, man. <laughs> Fucking one of the Paulie. best. One of the best to ever do it, though. One of the best to ever do it. Oh, yeah. Hands down. Hands down. But, Still uh, is one of the best. Not for nothing. Like, you know, we went to, uh, you know, just to get into it a little bit, we went to Dynamite yesterday. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think... Yo, even though the crowd was a lot a lot more alive at Arthur Ashe, I just felt, I don't know, it, the, the, the show felt better to me. I guess probably because it wasn't so damn long. That's probably it, bro. Uh, first off, the UBS joint. Let me get Beautiful a Beautiful arena. Of our, fantastic arena. Fantastic, bro. Those fucking seats, man. Yo, the seats were <laughs> to die for. <laughs> Literally, I had no issues sitting there. I had no back problems, no leg spasms. People were walking by to go to the restroom. We got up like human beings should, and they walked by, and it didn't feel like they were squeezing by. We had like a 300-pound guy next to us. He walked by. I didn't feel him walk by. Felt like a gentle breeze. He just said, like right by. Like a gentle breeze. <laughs> just, <laughs> This, this heavy set man just glided right by us. Yo, I, I I think those were the best seats I've ever fucking sat in in any arena, bro. Any yeah, other bro. spot, I, I've had he- leg cramps. I didn't want people to stand up. I'm like, yo, if you got to fucking shit, bro, shit on yourself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ain't no way you got to make it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm standing up for the third time already. Like, come on, guy. Yo, facts, bro. Facts. Oh, man. No, but, but the, like, definitely, yo, that arena, it, it's a really nice looking arena. Uh, comfortable as fuck, like you just said, and yo, man, we have great glad- seats, bro. And not I- for nothing, I am very glad we got there for when CM Punk was uh was on the mic because, gosh, wow. that was so good, yo. It he was came literally out to MJF's music, and we heard the boos. <laughs> and me and me, you and Shice were like, yo, they're booing MJF, and then we hear F- fucking CM Punk and. That shit was funny. It's not like hilarity. Yeah, I, I uh, yo, definitely Bret Hart 97 vibes in Canada. Fact. I mean, fucking MJF was like the ultimate face. It, it was, it, it was, was bizarre crazy. world. Yes. It was bizarre world. At it, was time, bro. it was lovely. It was <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Like right. you would say. <laughs> bro, yo, bro, you know what was hilarious? Yo, they were booing CM Punk so hard. So hard. At the end, when his music hit, they fucking singing along to it, fucking doing the bit, 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 all yeah. of that shit. They're doing all of it, and I'm like, yo, these people have no idea what they're doing. Like, 
they're booing and then cheering and then singing. And I'm like, and then when he finally left, they they just cheered it. And I'm like, damn, yo, like, it's like a fucking emotional roller coaster here. Like, do you like him? Do you hate him? Like, what the yeah, fuck what's is going it? on here? Are you are you with the guy? Are you nuts? <laughs> like, no, shit. but it was it it was great. Uh, the little video that they put before MJF came out to his match, uh, for the what was that the. Or the, like that, uh, that, that battle royal they had yeah to see who he was gonna face next week mm-hmm. i mean all of that him coming out with the fucking high school letterman jacket like i was just like yo this this is a little too much but it's just hilarious man, and yeah man uh mjf mjf really did it up i i'm actually happy that he didn't go and went like stupid heel where everybody's cheering him and he's still like dissing the crowd he didn't diss the crowd this motherfucker was like hugging people and putting his back towards the crowd, looking like a face. Straight hometown hero, this guy. Hometown motherfucking him. hero, bro. The whole place was cheering. Like, yo, honestly, I watched it again this morning. Yeah. Yo, you can see he was having tears in his eyes when he was on his knees. Like he had tears almost coming out of his eyes and he like held it back like shit, bro. I'm home and they're, they're like cheering for me. Like this whole... This whole time in AEW, all you hear is booze for this man, and he, he's in Long Island getting cheered. Yeah, like if he yep. just saved the world, <laughs> like, shit. He, like he just saved the world. <laughs> nah, man, yo, MJF really, uh, really did it up, man. He did it up, and um, like I said, it was a good time. Uh, a lot, a lot of inter- interesting things that I seen. And, you know, like everybody, you know, they, they'll give WWE shit, you know, for like crowd, like the, the noise in the crowd mm-hmm, being pumped mm-hmm. in and all this other shit. But in the beginning, when the Bucks came out, I don't know, like I turned to you and Shay, so I'm like, yo, are they getting like no reaction right now? It seemed like they were getting no reaction. Yeah, they definitely weren't getting. You know, we real. weren't we weren't fucking sitting in the rafters or anything like no. that. We was like in the hundred sections, was right there. You know, I had a, had some pretty good fucking seats, but I I don't know. Like, I didn't hear anything around us. Like, I didn't feel like anybody was cheering or booing. Nothing. And then there was certain in- instances where you would hear that, regardless if it was like with the faces or the heels, whatever it may be. Yeah. And it's like, damn, I was like, yo, is the Long Island crowd really that trash? You know what I'm saying? Not trash as like in people or whatever, but just like, you know, like trash being a part of the show. Yeah, like just being a part of the show and making it live and shit. Because, dude, you know, when I was in Brooklyn for Survivor Series and shit, regardless of the match or whatever, people were all over the place on it. Yep. People were going fucking nuts with it. Um, Shit, when we we go to the Garden, when uh, a couple of times when we went to the Barclays Center together, you know what I mean? Or even the Nassau Coliseum, like, uh, but the, not the Nassau Coliseum, the Prudential Center. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's just, it was just a different feel, a different atmosphere. I don't know. Like, what what did you, what did you think about that? It, it's funny you say that it felt like they got no reaction because that's almost how I felt. Oh, it's like, are they're not giving them reaction because people feel that they heals or they just lost interest into the young bucks. Like the only guy that was reacting was the guy that was sitting in front of us that was standing the whole time cheering. Oh, geez. Like cursing out everybody. Like I'm I'm glad he was there because he was like spewing the energy I was trying to have. (laughs) (laughs) I was just like, yo, fuck, like these seats got me too comfy. (laughs) Yeah, word. I felt like I was home watching this. I was like, yo, this feels good right here. Yo, for real. Yo, one thing I, I appreciate with AEW is that wherever you're going in wherever spot that they're at, if they have TVs, they're going to show it on their TVs. WWE don't do, doesn't do do that. If you leave your seats, you're going to miss out to whatever's happening. You know, like you're just always going to just see the logos or like, you know, promotions. It's never going to be the match. AEW, anywhere you went, when we were at Arthur Ashe, they had the TV set up for the matches. Yeah. Here at the UBS arena, they had the TV set up for the matches. Every like you're not gonna miss anything. It may be a couple of seconds delay, but it was like you're not gonna miss out. But yo, right. back to the young bucks or the bucks, as I'm gonna call them for now on, because they're already in their 30s and we shouldn't be calling them young anymore. 
I'm kind of aware. I'm aware that people are like losing interest in them. Yeah, I mean, like, not 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 to like you know say that like they get no reaction because like you know as the match went as the match got going, you know that people were getting into it. Then you yeah. started hearing the crowd. You know what I'm saying? But it yeah, was they were just, doing the little hot hot spots and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean? And then you know the the false finishes. You know you then they got the people into it. Then everybody started getting you know. A little more emotions riled up and shit, but in the beginning you it was just I weird. I don't know, it was just weird for me. No, yeah, I well, I don't get the only reaction that I really noticed that they got is when they did the whole kissing Adam Adam Cole thing. I don't yeah. get why people were so into that. Like, bro, we're still in pandemics. This is why COVID's going around. This is why we got the fucking <laughs> Unicron version now of the pan of the coronavirus because y'all want to be kissing each other while still fucking wrestling. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> like. Shit. <laughs> He's like, stop kissing me. Yeah, for real. Stop kissing me. <laughs> Just keep keep wrestling. Yo, and uh that was the only that was the only reaction I realized that they had. And then yeah. uh Trent Barret Beretta popped up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trent Trent popped up. Um, yo, shout out to John Silver. Word, shout out to John Silver, another Long Island hero. Yes, yes, took he an got- L last night. But still, hey, he put up a good match. He put up a good match. That was a really match, good man. match. That was a yeah, really good bro. match against uh Daniel Bryan. I mean Brian Danielson, sorry. Word. Um, <laughs> American Dragon. Word up, word up. Uh I mean, yo, listen. It I, I don't know, bro. It's just certain things uh about AEW sometimes, like all right, go go the go home show, they didn't really give us much. You know, they gave us like that little run in with uh, with Hangman during uh, after the match because you know Brian Danielson was gonna kick in John Silver's head. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, it it's just the matches like the Young Bucks versus Rocky Romero and Chuck Taylor. Like I said, there was a couple of good spots in that match. You know, it got the it got the crowd going. Yep. But I felt myself kind of drifting off sometimes watching the show. Oh yeah, definitely. You it, know, like, it like the acclaim. Me of, yeah, but yeah. when the acclaim comes out, I'm not feeling it. Like, like, yo, that 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 dude's raps, bro. Fucking caster, shit is horrible. Yeah, like it. it there's there's nothing that's like jaw dropping. Like sometimes you'll probably say a little something, and and you'll be like, oh shit, damn, this nigga went overboard. But it's not something like, damn, that that was that was fire. Yeah, it wasn't like what Top Dollar did when he was spitting and shit like that. He ain't have... And Top Dollar ain't even all that. Like, <laughs> yeah, but at least he had some bars. Like, this dude comes out acting like he's freestyling. And you could definitely tell he's freestyling because his bars are... Str- <laughs> LP, you there? Yeah, I'm here. It was weird. Oh, he's My shit just like froze you- up. Yeah, you just froze up real quick. What, what were you saying? His bars are what? Straight basuda, son. Like, it's straight garbage. <laughs> straight hot trash. Yeah. Like, for yeah. real. And I'm like, uh, yo, they still riding with this gimmick for this guy? Like, fuck. You know? I I, yeah, I was just like, oh. Hire some writers. Hire, like, fucking have Wale come through and write fucking, fucking six pages of 16 bars for the next six weeks for this guy or whenever he's going to show up. They're like, yo, here, free Southeast. That's it. <laughs> like, that's it. Have some Ghost Riders, because he's trash. Like, I, I, I'm, and it got me wondering, like, as I, as I was feeling like that during the show, because, you know, there was just, you know, there was a couple of matches I was really into. Like, mm-hmm. the match, you know, I don't want to give away the finish, but everybody knows, you know, for Rampage, they got the Lucha Bros versus FTR. Mm-hmm. That match was fire, bro, fire. Loved it. Uh, one of the one of the things I love the most about AEW, which is their tag division, they have like a really solid tag division. And you're always gonna get a really f- solid tag team match out of the, out of it. But I started thinking, like I was just saying, what if people at home watching are starting to think that? As right. as you know, like you know, AEW's numbers haven't been as strong as before and you know whatever they consider strong numbers whether it be in a certain demographic or whatever it is haven't been up to what they've been 
bragging about. You know what I'm saying? So you don't hear Tony Khan bragging about the numbers anymore because they ain't number one in the demo. They're not number one in this, down to the third. They're falling into number five, six, seven, or whatever it may be. They're not hitting the mill mark. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering, are, are people at home starting to be like, ah, you know what, this is kind of repetitive or this ain't really it? Oh, well, probably people are realizing they're not an entertainment business. They are a pro wrestling business. And it's going to feel like independent wrestling. It's going to feel like the indies. When we were there, I felt like I was like, all right, this is a bigger arena for indie promotion. That's yeah. what it felt like. You know, the fucking 25-man battle royale for the diamond ring. Like, I didn't understand why MJF was there for that match. Like, I guess the only last two show the only ones. Yeah, like. I get it's to show himself, and like I get he's the one that's what the two time diamond ring champ right now. Yeah, but might as well just have one person win the whole thing and then he pops up, you know? Like he didn't have to be in that match, but it was fun seeing him there. Yeah, because like, after the, the match, you know, you thought he was you thought he was really being a a face, you know? He he raised the dude's hand and said, "Good shook job, kid." Hand. Shook his hand. Then he was, remember, fucking um, Ricky Starks comes, starts beating the kid's ass. Word. And then he did the whole looking back to the ring, like, gosh, should I go? Should I go? Then he runs to the ring, makes it seem like he's going to beat up Ricky Starks. And then he just beats up, uh, what's uh, his name? That, yeah, that, that was that was great. That was great. That was, was perfect. Now, that was entertaining. That was entertaining because it was just exactly what the crowd wanted. They wanted MJF the asshole. Yeah. Like the crowd cheered when he ran. But they cheered even louder yeah, more. when he started beating the shit out of him. I was like, yo. When he was this, himself, they cheered even more. Exactly. Like, this is exactly what the people wanted. <laughs> exactly, man. It, it was great. It was great. Uh, shout out to MJF, uh, John Silver, Brian Danielson, Lucha Bros, FTR. Great matches right through there. What's and, this? Uh, 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 there was a women's match. Rico? Rico what's her yeah, name? Yeah, Rio. 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 Yeah. Yo, I'm watching her whole match. Yeah. And I was, yo, consistently thinking they could make a whole anime about her being just a pro she, wrestler, she, trying she to like, make it. Into, like, she was a legit living, like, Sailor Moon character. Yo, for real. <laughs> From her coming in, like, waving at the audience to her taking off her, 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 uh, cape. Yeah. When she takes off a cape and threw it up in the air. That's some anime shit. I was like, yo, in my head, I was just thinking, I was like, yo, this she's like the perfect character to make an all-around wrestling cartoon around. Like, she doesn't have to win a championship in the AEW, but have her win a championship in the cartoon. <laughs> That's it. Like, yeah. I think, yeah, she was uh, the first um uh first uh, women's, women's champion. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, she's she's all right. I just I don't know, man. I couldn't really get into it. Like I said, I had fun at the show, maybe because I felt so relaxed and I didn't have to be there for four plus hours. That's another thing, bro. Like we, you know, when we went to the Grand Slam, that shit felt like it felt like we were it was doing never going to end part time job. Even when we went to uh, WrestleMania, when it was in up in uh, MetLife, Met Life. bro, I think that was the longest event we went to. It was like six hours. And it felt like we fucking pushed that like a full time job right there. We were there, yeah. We were there early, bro. We were there early, and shit started early. That's why when we left, like last night, when we left, we left at the right time. Like, yeah, we saw what happened at whatever on rampage and shit. But then we were like, "Fuck this, let's beat the traffic, bro." That's all it is, because yo, the traffic going into that spot was a little crazy. Yo, for real, you know. So and yo, it's funny because I kept telling you, I'm like, "Yo, rampage hasn't started yet." But in my mind, I'm thinking when I saw everything go up, in my mind, it just jumped into Friday. I'm like, how come for Rampage is like 15, 20 minutes late? What's going on? <laughs> Where's Rampage? I'm being an idiot because Rampage is only airing on Friday and it was Wednesday. So I'm just like, how come they're not on time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like right here. No, for real. Where like, are you? <laughs> I, I, I felt like in Grand Slam, they actually got that shit ready stupid quick. Yeah. And like at 10 o'clock, Rampage started and we were like, whoa, we got two hours more. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. It was like extended shows, too. Oh, my yeah, God. Bro. 
Yeah, that was a little too much. That's that that definitely was a little too much. Um, yeah, man. Yo, and shout out to Shice, you know, getting some really good seats there, you know. Yeah, facts. Good looking Mr. Shice. He he came through. Came through on the last on the last I, minute call up, like, yo, we got these tickets. I thought you guys were raffling them off. People missed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We people we did raffle out, them off. Yeah, people missed out. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Uh another thing that came in, uh, well, you know, fr- fresh off this this past weekend, you know, there was uh there was video of Jeff Hardy kind of looking at, out of it. I don't know if he was looking out of it because when I seen the video, he just rolled out of the ring, went into the stands, and kind of, like, disappeared. Yeah. So when people say he was looking out of it in the video, I didn't see what he looked, because you couldn't really tell what he looked like in the video. Mm-hmm. But they were saying that he had, he had like, a, a hard night. Maybe it was, like, a little too much drinking or whatever it may be. Yeah. And motherfucker went through the crowd to leave. Basically, leave the arena and go home. He went home, got sent home. Uh, a couple of days later, he's let go by the WWE. So Jeff Hardy yep. is not with the WWE anymore. Um, a lot of people has been saying some really fucked up shit on Twitter. Of course, saying that he needs to grow up and what the fuck? How, how is he going to be such a such an abuser? Basically, such a fucking dependent and an addi- and an addict. Yeah. Yo, this, this shit ain't this shit ain't fucking child's play like this is a fucking disease bro motherfuckers die because of this shit and at that he's in a profession where that disease is rampant exactly like with people saying shit like that being so fucking heartless like that means you've never experienced it yourself you never experienced being around people that are like that or even having a family member that's going through some shit like that you know what i'm saying when you see that shit live live and in color you have a different perspective of what that shit is. And you know that shit ain't a fucking game. And the thing is, people forget. Jeff Hardy's been wrestling since he was 15 years old. I'm yeah. talking major league wrestling. Like, yeah. He lying lying, on, lying on them papers. Lying on them papers just to be a fucking jobber on superstars. And to get fucking his back broken, fucking damn near breaking his neck time after time after time. Like, come on, bro. Like, this man, I'm surprised. He's still walking. No, oh, definitely. Damn, what the fuck? In the next few talk? years, he's definitely going to have some issues. No, like you can see it with Jeff Hardy. I mean, uh, with Matt Hardy. With Matt Hardy. he Like he's, he's what? You ever see him walk to the ring? Like, yeah, bro. It's his hips. His hips are gone. His knees are gone. Like, bro. Yeah, and he knows man. he's taking bumps lighter, but they still hurt. Like Nigga. they still hurt, bro. I still think about that bump he took with fucking... Uh, Sammy Guevara, where he was like basically knocked out for a little while. Yo, facts, bro. Like that shit facts. was insane, bro. And he didn't even take all the crazy bumps. It was usually Jeff Hardy taking all the crazy shit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, what are these niggas gonna look like when they hit 60, 70 in the next like 20 years? And Jeff Hardy's what, 40? 42 max? 44, I think. 44? Yeah. Jesus, bro. We should be appreciative that he's still around. Both of them, but I just, you know, I just hope, you know, he does find the help he needs if that's what it is. You yeah, know what I'm saying? A lot of people talk about it's like, oh, he he uh, denied rehab from WWE, but rehab could mean uh, uh, detoxing. It could be helping him rehabilitate his the issues on his body. It's like, yo, go see, you know, our specialists see what's up with your hips, see what's up with your back, see what's up with your knees. And maybe he ain't want to deal with that because then there'll be time off of work he'll have to take and he might not come back for a year. Or so, so he probably was like, nah, fuck that. I know how my body feels. Yeah. I'm going to just ride it through. And they're just like, we're not going to risk that because obviously they have to think about, you know, the people. No, are- definitely, definitely. You know, and I mean, I, I, it, it could most likely be the demons he's always been fighting. Mm-hmm. But um, until I, I hear it from the people that are close to the subject, 
I don't want to, I don't want to be like, ah, oh, you see this motherfucker, you know, he, he fell off the wagon again or whatever it may be. Just well, hope, his, I'm just hoping whatever it is, he could find the help that he needs and well, you his know, wife get back tweeted. to his He said he's made, all right. Yeah. She was like, he made it home. He's fine. Like that's, as long as she says it's, he's fine, then he should, everybody should assume that he's fine. Like, why would she lie about that? I mean, you never know. Maybe to save face, but uh you know it's hard it's hard to you know see how everything flows so man you know shout out to jeff hardy ho- hoping he get better and you know ho- hoping to have more matches and hopefully may- may- maybe we'll see him at hog one day i mean him and him and uh him and his brother matt were you know hog tag champs a couple years back well That's some great showings out there with the fucking uh matt hardy has young uh, hardy the Hardy uh, office or whatever. What's yeah, the HFO, back? HFO, yeah. Hardy Family Office, some shit like that. Yeah, Hardy, Hardy Family, Family Organization. organization. Yeah, and the uh, 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 what is that? What's these guys from uh, HOG? The party. Yeah, yeah, um, private party. Private party. They they're part of now Hardy's crew. Yeah. So imagine if Jeff Hardy appears in AEW, joining the Hardy Family Organization. That'll boom, be some boom, shit. Boom. That's gonna be some crazy shit right there. You know what would be a ill crazy shit though? If WWE lets go of Jeff Hardy and hires this Hardy. No shit. They're like we just signed Willow. Because <laughs> I would not mind seeing Hardy as a heel as Willow in the WWE. Yo, might as well this, fucking this put some money just, behind that. And this this was all just a story. That'd be great. I'll be crazy. That would be great. That'd be an old school swerve. I'll be a I'll be a fucking really swerve and a half if they did some shit like that. Hell yeah! I mean, that, it, it's been rumored for a little while about the whole Willow thing, and um, even going back to like that uh, that bar room match he had with Sheamus. Mm. Remember when his eyes turned back and all this other shit, and he had yeah, the white yeah. and black paint on. He had like a Willow moment there. Um, and he's been talking about how he's been wanting to like uh resurrect that character again. So maybe maybe it happens in AEW, maybe it happens on an impact again. Who knows? Mm. You know what I'm saying? But um true. Just uh all, all the best, all the best to Mr. Jeff Hardy over there, man. Word. I'll say one last thing about Jeff Hardy, and then we can move on. If yeah. he does join the AEW crew, I want him to have that match with Sting that he should have had. Back in 2011. You think Stink actually do a full, like, at least 12-minute match? I think with him and Jeff Hardy, they could do a good 12-minute match. They don't have to go crazy hard. It just has to be moments. You just got to give us those moments where it's just like, holy shit, is Sting really going to win this? Or is Jeff Hardy finally going to put, you know, pin Sting's shoulders down? Because when we saw them at Victor, uh, Victory Lane, I think. Or where, Victory where? Road. Victory Road. Yo, Eric Bischoff, like, blew up the whole match right at the beginning. Like, you know, he was like, you're pointing at Jeff. He's like, you're done. Sting, roll him up. Fucking pin him. I don't give a fuck how you do it. He's out after this. I think Jeff Hardy needs that little redemption against Sting. Just to show that he respects Sting. You know, because that yeah. match should have been a bigger match than what it became for Jeff Hardy and Sting. Gotcha. I mean, let's see, man. Let's see how it goes. Let's see where it goes. Word. You True. know what I'm saying? Let's see. Let's see what happens with all that shit. But uh, this Monday night, we seen Liv Morgan <laughs> get her, her shot at the title, but lose it as well to Becky Lynch, you know, lost mm-hmm. in uh, cheating fashion. As uh, Becky Lynch has been doing with the with the holding of the ropes and all that shit. Mm-hmm, One mm-hmm. thing that I can say that I really noticed about Liv Morgan, she's basically showed herself and let the company know that she could be a main main event talent within that women's division. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Do I could do I see her as somebody with a long title reign? I really don't. Nah, I really don't. I see her at more as a transitional champion. She's yeah. going to get, I feel like she's going to get her big moment though. Whether it comes through winning the Rumble, going back, getting a WrestleMania moment, or maybe at a Royal Rumble, maybe this goes into the Rumble and she gets another title shot and she wins it there. 
But I see her getting a big moment at a pay-per-view event where she's going to win that title. But um, I don't know, man. I feel like Becky is all talk. Like, the allure of her being Becky is what keeps her going. Because mm-hmm. what I've been seeing in the ring with her, I don't know. Like, it, it just doesn't – It's not. it doesn't go – off the page like it's not like oh wow like when i see bianca Belair, when i see sasha when i see uh um, charlotte. charlotte when i see even um uh what you gonna call it uh Maria ripley not nah, ria she's injured right now why why am i why do i have a brain fart right now ding dong fucking um sasha's best friend Bailey, Jesus oh, Lord, yeah. I just had a crazy brain fart right now. Jesus. I forgot like, about Bailey. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I see them, I'm like, wow, you know, like, these fucking ladies can go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't get that from Becky. I don't get, like, that sense of, like, excitement when I see her matches. Because she ain't got nobody like Nia Jax around anymore <laughs> to make her who she became. You know, so... I. I mean, you see it with Bianca now, regardless of whatever hate she's getting right now, which is crazy. I don't know why she's getting hate. But um, she's able, at such a young point in her career, to make other stars. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing that with with the segments that she's having with Dewdrop. You know what I'm saying? Dewdrop was was always pretty cool as Piper Nevins in uh, NXT UK when she first came over and all this other shit. Cause you know, for for a lady of her size, she could really go. Yeah, but and I like what they're doing, Dewdrop. Cause yeah, usually when you have a woman her size, they'll make her bubbly and like friendly and like charismatic yeah, yeah. to the crowd and shit like that. Like she's showing them what she used to do in the independence. Like she really goes. Yeah, and as a heel, she uses her weight around. To do more damage it makes her even more of a competitor than somebody that's fucking there dancing i agree like i agree i'm glad i'm glad what they're doing between what they're doing with dewdrop and bianca you know that's what they should be doing yeah they need to start building up a better roster with the women's division like Liv morgan like you said we could see her as a transitional champ but for how long like that title ring could last Two weeks, maybe yeah. Two I, I could see that's why like, I was saying maybe you know Royal Rumble because she could hold it from the Rumble to you know WrestleMania, yeah. Be, be one of that, be one of the head, uh, the head matches in the women's division for Mania. Um, you know, give her a nice little little run, you know, a little two three month run, yeah. But, but then, like, I, that's see, what I see, you know, like if you see her fighting Dewdrop or Bianca Belair or even Rhea Ripley. She's not gonna be able to hold it, hold it together as best as she could. Yeah, and that's what we're seeing with Bianca, with uh, Bianca, with Becky Lynch. Gotcha. She's going against these like real athletic wrestlers. Like yep. these women could go, and you could see the flaws where Becky Lynch was. Like, yeah, she was the man because our girl right here, the woman who was doing mad, like it may have seemed nasty to people, it may have seemed botched. But she made the fights between her and whoever else seem real. It was messy. It was fucking chaotic. And you were, oh, everybody was quick to blame Nia Jax. But at the end of it, she was the one that made people like really put that extra oomph into their match. Yeah. Like they had to do more than what they what they were used to because she's a big woman. You have to make it seem real. <laughs> you got, you had to really her. put in your shit, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's why when we saw her and, and, and Charlotte Flair go at it, that was a real like match. It was a real fight because it was like she's not going to lay down for Charlotte, even though it was written for her to lay down. Yeah. But she was like, no, you got to fight. You got to fight for this part. Like if you want to really win, you have to make it look like you're really winning. That's what's wrong with Becky. I, I Lynch. totally agree, bro. I totally agree with what you just said there. And I like I, I like the only way that Becky Lynch is winning is by her heel tactics, which is usually grabbing the bottom of the rope. But how many times is it going to happen? You know, you know, until she gets caught and then they have to restart the match or some shit like that. 
then or they have a no or or, or a no disqualification straight up no i mean if they if they have a match with no rules she could do whatever she wants to win yeah you know what i'm saying and she could she could really do that but um i i, I could see her you know having to restart a match and then that's when she loses it on some like you know classic classic shit not classic but some old school shit yeah but um yeah, yo, uh, I see, I see, I really see Liv Morgan in the turn of the year having that title ring. And I feel, like, I, I just, I don't know, something in me saying that Rump, Royal Rumble. I mean, I know we have day one coming up first, but Royal Rumble. I really do think it's going to be with the Rumble. I could see that. I could see that. She has the look for it, too. Yeah. She yeah. has a look that, you know, it could make her I mean, we got, we got a new fucking Miz girl, bro. They fucking pointed to the crowd to some... Little girl, she looked fucking tight, bro. Oh, yeah. And it looked yeah. like her father was laughing at her. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? Jesus. Ha <laughs> ha, she lost. That shit was funny, bro. It was oh. funny. Yo. What a this, father. That reminded of what you just said reminded me of the dad that we saw, like, trying to negotiate with his five-year-old son oh. when we got there. And it was MJF's music. And he was just like, I don't want to be here. MJF is out. I don't want to be here. And the dad's <laughs> just like, come on. Like, I just paid these tickets. You want a soda? Let's just go watch. And he was like, no, he's talking. We have to leave. And the kid's like crying. Like, yep. like, Yo. I'm like, oh, shit. A good old fashioned beating would have changed that. <laughs> <laughs> a good old fashioned discipline. All uh, right. <laughs> kids oh, my days. God. <laughs> but, um, you know, this past Sunday, we had war games. And at War Games, you know, a lot of the new talent got put over. Yep. Uh, Cora Jade, you know, getting the pin for the fem- for the for the women's uh, War Games match. Um, the men's War Games match, we seen you know the future. Every everybody saying the future of the business and Braun Breaker getting the win and getting the win over Champa. Over at that, Ciampa, bro. Uh, a great showing by all the young guns. Uh, shout out to Carmelo Hayes. Uh, Grayson Waller with that crazy elbow drop from uh, from the top of the cage. Yo, Ron Breaker getting better uh, with every in-ring uh, chance he gets. And more and more turning into his uncle. Yeah. Uh, and then, pump. <laughs> yo, and then fucking uh, my, my man. Uh, hey, how you doing? Word. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. Uh, damn, what? What's I'd his be, name? I'd be, Vinny? I'd be, I be I be getting these ill brain farts trying to come up with their names, bro. It's too many people we be we were trying to remember. Word Tony D'Angelo, yeah, Tony, Tony D'Angelo. D'Angelo, that guy right there. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to have him. He's trying to have him a Bronx Hill with fucking Lash Legends. I see him. I see him over there. Trying oh, to yeah, see what, yeah. trying to see what's up with the, well, you know, with the chocolate with the chocolate shorty. <laughs> I see him. I see him, but it's all good. But um, it's not low. It's not low. No, oh, definitely not low. Definitely not low. But, but yo, uh, I, you know, I thought well, this. I, I thought the storytelling on all of War Games was pretty dope. Yeah, Kyle Riley being uh, having his tag team partner turn on him. Like, yeah, I thought and then, Kyle, you know that that led that led into a cage match on Tuesday. Yeah, uh, I we'll, we'll get it. Be we'll, Kyle O'Reilly that was going to turn on him. I was like, oh shit. Like, yeah. Yeah, we'll 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 get into to Kyle O'Reilly and uh Gargano after this, but um what I seen in the war in, in the whole event in itself, and the event was pretty pretty well uh put together, mm-hmm. was that you know there is no more black and gold. Like the black and gold is done. It's NXT 2.0, and this is what it is now, and like that's it. Like there you can't like the comparison should just stop now. Oh yeah! Uh, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And if you don't, don't watch it. You know what I'm saying? Like you know that I'm. They seem to be having some type of resurgence of fans. You know they 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 get they get like pretty much the same type of views. Maybe some some Tuesdays are gonna get a little more than usual. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean this is another another chapter in you know WWE developmental. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we we go from ovw to fcw and then the exception of what nxt used to be you know what i'm saying and this all happened when they went with new talent yep there was people in ovw that people thought that they were going to go up to the main roster and do big things and they didn't do it 
or if they did go to the main roster, it didn't happen for them. FCW comes around and then they have a mix of everything. You know, you have people from the Indies from around the world, like Drew, Sheamus, Seth, Dean. And then you had the, the big athletes, you know, like Roman and Big E, former football players. You know what I'm saying? Fucking Baron Corbin, another former NFL player. And I just feel like sometimes us as fans, we get so enthralled and always want to like keep stuff kind of like the same because we love it so much. And then when there's little tweaks to it, we start we start disliking it. We start talking down on it. And, you know, kind of you, you kind of make yourself lose interest. In certain, in certain cases, I'm not saying that's that's the case for everything, but it seems like in certain cases, the fans do that shit to themselves. And then when yeah, of course. they get like this new, this new uh, turnaround, like this new uh, fucking, uh, what, what's the, I can't even think right now, Jesus Lord. Like just a new, new version of what, of what something is. They're going to shit on it at first until they really like it. You know what I'm saying? Until like they see something they really like. And I feel like that's where we're going to NXT 2.0. People are starting to pick out stuff that they like. Like, people picked out Braun Breaker. They they try to shit on his name and all this other shit. But after all that, they ended up loving this guy. True story. Where where True do you story. think where do you think NXT goes from here? Well, they got a nice lineup of new talent. Like uh uh this guy Grimes. Like, first off, I thought they were gonna do the whole uh, you know, the million dollar man gimmick with him when him and LA Knight was going after the million dollar man and facing off for the million dollar title. Yeah, but like he started this whole thing. Like, he's just one of those guys that he may not be like they're not putting them off as like a rich guy, like he's got money, money, but they're putting them off as like you know, he's nobody to play with with gambling and shit like that. He like he may not be cheating, but he knows how to read your cards without without seeing them. And the fact that he had a hair versus hair match at war games really piqued my interest because it was just like oh with honestly, fucking, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that shit with uh with with Duke uh with I know his name is Duke. You see, <laughs> yeah. Most of these people I, I don't I don't really uh catch their names too too much but um yeah man he's gonna be he's gonna be something else that guy right there both of them both of them yeah, are oh yeah but cameron grimes cameron grimes i i liked him from the beginning i remember when he was running around as a what was it brody something brody not brody lee fucking uh something brody but he he had the championship belt like he won in the independence yeah he and- was a, he was part of impact he was part of impact yeah, and he'll come in and fucking... As a matter of fact, he had the X Division title. Yeah. And he'll wrestle with the X Division title on. Like, he was one of the first wrestlers that I've seen do that. Like, straight up at the first five minutes, straight wrestling with the title. Like, not using that as a weapon, but having to cover his gut so if somebody speared him, they're kind of hurting themselves. If they're kicking him, they're going to hurt their leg. Like, it wasn't, like, anything of, like, oh, that's illegal. It was a part of the match. Like, I was like, this dude is on to something. And the fact that he was willing to have the hair versus hair match, I'm glad he won, because I don't think it, the the storyline will work if he lost. You feel me? Because he already had his hair cut by him. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like I think like a week or two prior to that, like he already had his hair cut, and the guy shaved a little bit of his beard off, or yeah. cut some of his beard off, or something like that. That's why he looks cleaner now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yo, the the look the look works for him. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, uh, I, I their, think... most, their beef is it's interesting. Like yeah, you, you know they they had a fucking poker tournament in the middle of the ring for like a good ten minutes. <laughs> it was just like, what's going on? What were we watching here? But it made for good storytelling. Like it was just Yo, it, it, it was like fucking uh Dino Bravo and fucking Ultimate Warrior doing a bench pressing contest in the middle of the fucking ring. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> what the fuck is this like? Fucking um, fucking arm wrestling and shit like that. Like yeah, when they have really Mark Henry arm wrestle dudes and shit. Yeah, it's fucking insane. Oh, man. But um, I like I kind of like where NXT is going right now because oh, you yeah. have to just like with OVW, you know what I'm saying? F- FCW and 
the early NXT. They needed to make this young talent. They needed to make these crops of talents. Because if you look back and you go back to the, to the, was that um ruthless aggression era? Mm-hmm. You know, with Nexus and everybody. Yeah, but even before that, before Nexus, when they were just bringing up, uh, Randy Orton, Batista, John Cena, Bobby Lashley, um, when they when they repackaged fucking Mark Henry, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um. Who else? Even like Ted DiBiase Jr., fucking Shelton Benjamin, Brock Lesnar. Look at all these people that came up and think about it. These were all athletes. Mm-hmm. A lot of them weren't indie wrestlers. Brock no. Lesnar was no fucking indie wrestler. He came from fucking a, from Minnesota with Shelton Benjamin. Yep. Charlie Haas. You know, fucking John Cena was a bodybuilder that turned into a wrestler. He came from OVW. You know what I'm saying? Randy Orton was just a prodigy, bro. He came yeah. out. He came from a wrestling fan. Batista, motherfucker, was a bouncer. <laughs> you know what I'm and saying? He had like, look. Exactly. Like it's not like you're never gonna always find stars just on the indies that have been working at it. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you have to venture out. And I like this thing that WWE opened up, which is a pathway for uh, collegiate athletes to to go to WWE. Uh, it's called the NIL, uh, name, image, next and likeness. Line? It's oh, a that's program what they got. Huh? I thought it was next in line. Nah, it's a uh, name, image, and likeness. That's what the NIL stands for. And it's a program that provides a clear path for uh, collegiate athletes to the WWE. So okay. they could be in college still, a year left, two years left, and they're signed to WWE. And as soon as they're done, they go and train. That's dope. That's you know, smart. they're not going to make it big time as an athlete. They got something else to fall back on. Yeah. And, you know, people are saying, oh, you see, they're still fucking trying to depend on, on you know, people that don't have the passion or this is like their second, you know, their second choice of what to do in life. And it's like, yo, The Rock never always wanted to become a wrestler. When the shit didn't work out playing Canadian football, he couldn't go to the NFL. Where he go? He went he went down the family path. Yep. Same shit with Roman Reigns. Same shit with Big E. Big E had all these injuries. Somebody asked him, yo, I got I got a way for you to train with WWE. Would you like to, would you be interested in becoming a wrestler or trying to become one? He did it. I think his, I think Big E said his neighbor was Batista. That's fucking insane. My That's insane. Like, yeah, you got the look. You know, you know like I know it was his because like in his uh WWE documentary was talking about, I don't know if it was his college coach or somebody within the system where he played at in Iowa actually had like the the line to for him to go to WWE and train. That's real. And put That's him on just because of just because of his look and his size. You know what I'm saying? Fucking Brock Lesnar. Colleg- a collegiate Hall of Fame athlete. So was mm-hmm. fucking Lashley. Lashley was dominating in the army wrestling. Yeah. You know, like none of these people thought about first, you know, I want to be a WWE wrestler. Yeah, it's it's great having that person. They got the passion because they're going to put everything forth in trying to make this shit work. But listen, it works in other ways as well. Yep. And I feel like with what they're doing now in NXT, adding this, it's great. It's great. It's going to start. It's a new foundation for the next generation. Of stars that we'll probably see five years later. You know what I'm saying? And it hurts when we got to see guys like Kyle O'Reilly and Johnny Gargano leave. And you were just talking about uh Kyle O'Reilly before. He had a great he had a great tag team match with uh with Von Wagner. Uh yeah. and it, it and looked I did like, not like their story about them fucking going camping together and all that shit. <laughs> that shit seemed wild corny. I was like, oh wow, we're gonna fucking really waste time on this. But at the end of it, the payoff was well, well told, you know, like it led to a cage match that happened this Wednesday, uh, this past Wednesday, Tuesday, yesterday. Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, Tuesday. My bad. Tuesday. Yeah. 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 I forget that AEW is on Wednesdays now and NXT is on Tuesdays. Yeah. But yeah, like I was not expecting that type of like, you know, that type of finish. I kind of thought that Von Wagner would be 
the one get beaten down by Kyle O'Reilly and then gets beaten by Kyle O'Reilly before he leaves. I like that, you know, Kyle mm-hmm. left, left looking up at the lights. Like, you could tell this is not him coming back to WWE. This is him out of the WWE. Johnny Gargano, on the other hand, I think he's just going to take some time off. He's going to be a dad soon. So, you know, get well rested, get ready to prepare for the newborn. And then maybe not Royal Rumble, but next Royal Rumble, we'll probably see Gargano appear. But I don't see him leaving WWE, really. You don't see him see leaving him. WWE? I don't see him going to AEW. I think he could actually make a name again in the on the main shows, Raw or SmackDown. Because he made such an impact in NXT that if you have him appear on the Royal Rumble, that pop's going to be crazy. Like, I, I'm afraid of him leaving because it's just right now, it doesn't seem there's no... Like, the contracts in WWE don't mean much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we see it all through corporate America where people are let go uh, halfway through their contract, just starting their contract, whatever it may be with whatever company. But, um, you know, like you say, he's ha- he has, you know, he's, got, he's about to be a family man. And it's just, there's a lot of different factors, but I just feel that, just like what they're doing with Ciampa, Johnny Gargano is somebody you need there for NXT, regardless mm-hmm. of whatever NXT is going through. He's one of the OGs you really need there. Or maybe called up to the main roster. You know what I'm saying? I, I just feel like Kyle O'Reilly, yeah, he's great. But if there was a choice between Kyle O'Reilly and Johnny Gargano, you don't let Gargano go. Yeah, of course. I would, yeah. I, would, I would agree with that. Honestly, I could see Kyle O'Reilly go to AEW and restart Red Dragon with Bobby Fischia. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, was, like, the story's there for him and, you know, him and uh, Cole and and Bobby Fish to get back together. Yeah. It's there. Which I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't like that to happen. I know everybody wants shit like that to go down. Yeah. I feel like that's so boring. That is so boring. Just like, to like, right, just to like re, gonna, rehash, rehash something that just already happened. Yeah, we're gonna re get, we're gonna get the undisputed era and fucking AEW and what have all three of them kiss fucking Adam Cole. <laughs> Bro, get out of here with that shit. What? Like, what? You just want to kiss your friend? Yeah, you just want to be there and kissing, kissing buddies. <laughs> like fuck. Are they gonna get kissed by the young bucks next? Like, like I know, I know Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish to have. Good Yo. tag team matches that Hold look on. straight. My bad. Yo, when, when we were just talking about kissing babies, right? Yeah. Do you remember Batista? He's like, when you when you're hugging fat girls and kissing babies. Oh, I love that shit. I love that shit. Because that was the truest Batista. <laughs> like, why, why, why are you why are you so mad? <laughs> that was the greatest the Batista shit, bro. Like when he was just a straight heel and Speaking from the heart, like, like that shit was great, son. But to me, I'm thinking, like, yo, why are you so fucking mad? Like, what's getting you so mad? Is it mad fat girls and he doesn't want to see fat girls do to you? Like, what did they do to you? They're not doing enough. That's what they're doing. They're not doing enough, man. Oh, man. Shout out. Shout out to Batista. Word. What an asshole. But shout out to me. Shout out to Nation and Domination. Yes. And shout out and to Los Boricuas. Los Boricuas. <laughs> but um, I get Los Boricuas be picture up with these guys. And just have both of them like right there when we shout them out. Yeah, man. We gotta get we gotta get Sabio Vega on the pod, bro. <laughs> That'd be dope. Gotta get Sabio yeah, Vega on the pod. Definitely. Word. Word up. Oh. Let's talk about how fucking how Cody Rhodes is trying to go back for his TNT title again. This Cody Rhodes. Did you hear the hate though? I was loving it. Yo, the loving hate it. was crazy. The hate was crazy. <laughs> but I give it to Cody. He came out still scarred up from the table spot. Oh yeah, you seen uh, all that. You seen the fucking the burns, everything. Yeah, bro. Like he he looked he looked hurt. 
it's not that bullshit makeup where they fucking put like red soot on you and they're like, oh, act like you got burned. No, nah. uh, he had skin hurt. racing. He's yeah, hurt. He got hurt. <laughs> like, he got hurt. Shout out to Cody, but he hurt. Yeah, facts. Oh, damn, bro. I don't know how he's doing it, man. He's 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 bugging. He's bugging out here, bro. Out here wilding. Wilding like he on Rockers Island, bro. What the fuck is wrong with him? It was a smart move last week, though. I'll tell you that, not that much. If that match happened last night, that place would have erupted. Oh. erupted. But it's going to be good. Him versus Sammy Guevara? Because uh, I don't know, man. I wasn't too much of a fan of Guevara in the beginning, but recently just like seeing him work like yo dude dude is dude is all right man he could go sammy dude is all right man and uh you know i said it a couple of weeks back when um i brought up the question of uh who would like you know be the first to leave and yo i wouldn't be surprised if one of the first people that left AEW and maybe went somewhere else maybe go to wwe would be sammy garada and I, I thought of it in the in the way where how the first person to defect from WCW was the big show. Mm, true. You know what I'm saying? Nobody seen that coming and nobody really thought much of it until he went on that run and it was just crazy out there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Well, he became a dominating factor for WWE. Word up, bro. He's he dominating like a motherfucker, bro. Yeah, and not for nothing, Sammy Guerrero could work in WWE at this time where they have uh Angel Garcia and his cousin tag teaming together. Uh, Angel Garza. Garza, sorry, yeah. Garza. I don't know why I said Garcia. Yeah, Angel Garcia and um the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> but they're really related, like they're like fucking Oh no, cousins. yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, definitely. Which is definitely. cool. What are they calling them? Fucking the Los Lotharios. Lotharios. Fucking yeah. Who's there? Okay, there. Not, well, you know, that's if it's like um I'm I'm sure there's well, women yeah. womanizer in, in, in English. <laughs> yeah, basically the womanizers. <laughs> Yo, that, that name is fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome the <to> womanizers. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna womanize your women. Yo, but look at Look at what they have, like, with in WWE and in NXT. Like, the low tag teams and factions. Like, Sammy Guevara could be in the mix, not being a part of those tag teams or factions, but just being against them. Like, yeah. Going against Escobar and his crew. Going against uh this dude that just fought Escobar on Tuesday. Zeno. Fucking Zeno Morph or whatever. Oh, <laughs> Zion, Zion Quinn. Yeah, Zion Quinn. And look at that. He, he used to be a rugby player. Look at that. Yeah. And uh I think he was in uh mixed martial arts for a short time. Yo, look at all these, look at all these uh former other athletes. <laughs> See, man, they, they they get them from everywhere, bro. They get them from everywhere, man. But that's that's why WWE is WWE and AEW still feels like an independent promotion. I think uh I think they're going to climb out of that soon, but we got a lot. We got a lot to see. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot. And yo, man, they're only going into year three. Yeah. And everything they've been doing within the last two have been steps within the right direction in order to make, you know, some fly shit happen. So hopefully, you know, not even hopefully we see that it's changing little by little with the way they're, with the way they're doing their things, you know what I'm saying? So Let's see. Let's see what comes out of it. Let's see what comes out of it as we go into year three, as we go into 2022. Word. You know what I'm saying? Word yeah, up. man. Uh, fucking Cody Rhodes. <laughs> uh, fucking Stardust. Star- hey, man. Shout out to Stardust, man. Without Stardust, we wouldn't have AEW. Yo, without Stardust, bro. I thought Stardust was getting his, you know, his traction after a while, right before he left, he was like picking up. Yeah. And I was just like, yo, if they would have gave him like more creative pool, him and Goldust could have been son. The Dusty brothers, fucking some stupid shit. Yeah. I mean, they 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 were good at as a tag team when it was, you know, when it was Goldust and, and Cody. Yeah. They were good. You know, they had that moment beating the shield for the tag team titles, crazy fucking match as well. Word. But um, yeah, man, they had their moments. You know, it was just it was time, bro. He needed to go. He knew he knew he needed to go. 
He knew his, he knew his worth. He betted on himself, and look what happened. Yeah, we're got a whole fucking promotion out of it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So it's shout out facts, to him, bro. bro. He he tapped into his background, bro. Fucking. He's the only that. one that saw it before anybody else saw it. And he's yep. like, how come we can't run the business? Why does it got to be under everybody else? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, man. But yeah, man. Um, So we got SmackDown tomorrow night. We also mm-hmm. have win- Winter is Coming next Wednesday. We'll see what happens on Raw on Monday as we get closer to the day one pay-per-view event that's happening J- January 1st, 2022 to start off the year. But um, before we call it quits and say, you know, what we want to happen in the next coming year, you know, we're going to let uh, we're going to let all this go by, let the holidays go by. We'll have a nice big episode for everybody there. But uh, before we go, man. You got anything else to say? Um. Well, first off, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Storyline Tees. Yeah. Who has the dopest Bianca Belair shirt going on. Giving respects to our great Janet Jackson from the great Jackson family. And then you got the New Day representing the De La Soul first cover album. Come on, that's classic. What you gonna do the Max B type of t-shirt? When you gonna do that, bro? Max B. Ah, mm-hmm. I, I gotta I gotta think of a good one for that, man. True, true. Got it because uh, we gotta see what's up. While while we're waiting for the Max B, you could get the Chicago Punk 45 right here. Yes, sir. Seen on my left hand. Or <laughs> <laughs> you could get the fucking new American Dragon Brian Danielson joint. Ooh. That shit, the goat face killer. That's very dope. I don't have the picture, but if go go to Taylor, teams, yes, that is dropping very, very soon. Everybody who is subscribed to this storyline tease emailing emailing list. Everybody that follows Twitter, Instagram, better be ready. The news is dropping tomorrow. So be ready for that. Be ready for that. We could get the classics, you know, the original bloodline shirt that's right here. Maybe yes, sir. Go with the, when Bobby Lashley was champ. Yes, you know? sir. You could get the uh, nar- uh blah. it's <laughs> fucking Naito double champion one. I don't got it on. I got a, a different joint from Ooh, Mexico. I like that. I like that. I like that Thank Lucha you. shirt right there. Thank you. Very Ooh. nice. Very nice. Very nice. Straight from Mexico. Awesome. And little kids fucking sew it together with their fucking eyelashes. So you know it's authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my yeah, god, man. crazy, crazy. But yeah, yeah man. Uh, to thank you, thank you. And uh this was episode 171 of the 20 by 20 podcast. We are your host, Nathan McFly with LP Dangerously. 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 Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know what it is, man. It will be what you got here. playing for the show, bro? What you got playing at the end? Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. There's a lot. Good. There's a lot of new things out there. Uh, you know, you got that new Russ album there. Oh yeah, it just dropped last night. Yeah, yeah, you got that. Um, shit, you know, you got the Have and Styles P joint. I would go with that, bro. The having styles P. Yeah, there's a couple of joints there that I'm that I'm that I'm feeling. So uh yeah, man, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. You know, every time when I'm when I'm mixing up the episodes, I start like listening to the music while I do that. You know, true, true. you know, when I when I'm already bouncing the mix and then I, I bounce that mix, I got like a good like five, seven minutes. I'll start listening to certain certain things, see what which one catches my eye. Let's see what's up. You never know. No, nah, true. Sounds good. Sounds good, bro. You dig? I'll so, tell you what. I'll tell you what. What's up? Shout out to Mr. Shice. Shout out to SM2, aka Higgs Boson. Yes, sir. Shout out to our boy Bada Bing, Bada Boom. Bing Bong. And yo, shout out to those guys that was fucking chanting Bing Bong every time they were countdown from commercial break last night. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably oh, like man. a little section over there. They were like, Bing Bong. I was ready to be like, yo, that's a Brooklyn thing, got Long Island, but. You know, I just let it ride. I let it. Yo, Everybody man. wants to ride Nick's dick. So, <laughs> yeah, listen, bro. Gorilla Nems, he he uh 
He did it. He did it with that one, man. Yo, for real. He for did real. it with that one. I'm surprised his fuck your life didn't explode, but it's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it will now. Yeah, so <laughs> it will now, bro. He's everywhere. You gotta love him. You gotta love him, man. New York, New York's finest right there. But yeah, you already know what it is. It's episode 171 of the 20 by 20 podcast. And we out. Peace. Peace. You already know what it is. Matter of fact, you don't, because you've never seen this shit before. Sit down, relax, go for the ride. Word to the womb, my nigga, you know that cash rules. If you move it slow in the hood, you a fast fool. Cinderella story, my nigga, without the glass shoes. Oops, I mean slippers. Fuck with the guard, then I'ma shoot it up like a guard for the Clippers out there. 95 beaming with your snitches. Never made wishes. I just put coke on mama dishes. Thought about the road to the riches. Word to the snorkel at G-Rap War. Oracle to the dope boy. Jedi to the jack boy. Step on ghost toes, get your kneecaps gone. Word the H-A-V-O. Know when you on the G-O, get my dough. Or you D-O-A, lying like a Leo. I'm a sad, so I shoot a bow and arrow like I'm Neo. Sin City, nigga. I've been pretty, nigga. Not the face, but the lifestyle. Get with me, nigga. Out. We be moving how we want to move. We be doing what we want to do. We will do this shit in front of you. We will turn our back on your bitch ass in front on you. We be moving how we want to move. We be doing what we want to do. We will do this shit in front of you. We will turn our back on your bitch ass in front on you. Only in America, son. Throw them in the river. That's how niggas bury our guns. This way I get in it. Consider this area done. To watch the money come easy like inherited funds. Respect not given, it's taking like virginity. Something gotta bleed till everybody is feeling me. Then and only then will shit ever be real to me. Critically acclaimed for my nagging abilities to get that shit popping. The hunger's what triggered me. A few niggas ate it and abetted me unwittingly. Made a few moves that wasn't popular politically. I'm trying to move my commas in the columns of infinity. Poverty's a killer and I'm trying to get the drop on it. Realest nigga ever, bad bitches give me top for it. Won't be the illest EP unless the lock's on it. Little bit of mug, nothing you can swap for it. We be moving how we want to move. We be doing what we want to do. We will do this shit in front of you. We will turn our back on your bitch ass in front of you. We be moving how we want to move. We be doing what we want to do. We will do this shit in front of you. We will turn our back on your bitch ass in front of you.